a very well-known twin tower combination, but they're effective. They sure are, and of course they go to them at key times. They're to provide the offense underneath Tyrone Hill, who runs the floor. He's very active. Good offensive player. The other side, a well-built individual, Derek Strong, who has a fine turnaround jump shot. And they go to him when they need a big basket. All right, an established program in Georgetown and one on the rise in Xavier. We'll find out which one prevails. For the starting lineup, let's go to our PA announcer, Rep Porter. Good afternoon and welcome to the Hoosier Dome for second round competition in the Midwest region of the 1990 NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship. The Midwestern Collegiate Conference and Butler University are your proud co-hosts for today's competition. And now the starting lineups for today's second round game between the Xavier University Musketeers and the Georgetown University Hoyas. For Xavier, at one forward, a 6'10 senior from Cincinnati, Ohio, number 42, Tyrone Hill. For Georgetown, at a one forward, a 6'7 senior from Port Arthur, Texas, number 24, Anthony Allen. Xavier at the other forward, a 6'6 freshman from Belleville, Michigan, number 34, Maurice Brantley. Georgetown at the other forward, a 6'10 sophomore from Chesapeake, Virginia, number 33, Alonzo Morning. Xavier at center, a 6'10 senior from Los Angeles, California, number 33, Derek Strong. For Georgetown at center, a 7'2 junior from Kinshasa, Zaire, number 55, Dikembe Mutombo. For Xavier at one guard, a 6-foot freshman from Lorain, Ohio, number 22, Jamie Gladden. For Georgetown, at one guard, a 6'2 senior from New Orleans, Louisiana, number 12, Dwayne Bryant. For Xavier, at a guard, 5'11 junior from Bronx, New York, number 10, Jamal Walker. For Georgetown, at the other guard, a 6'2 senior from Washington, D.C., number 20, Mark Tillman. The head coach for Xavier, now in his fifth year with the Musketeers, is Pete Gillen. And the head coach for Georgetown, now in his 18th year with the Hoyas, John Thompson. The officials for this second game. Rutledge from the state of Florida, David Libby from San Diego, California, and Willis McJunkin from Spokane, Washington. And Billy, unlike the first contest from out here between Texas and Purdue, contrasting styles, these two teams really should play the same style. They both average 82, 84 points, 82 Georgetown, 84 for Xavier. The one fear that Pete Gillen expressed to me this morning was would his players be in awe? They've read about and watched Georgetown. They have to play in that comfort zone. And Georgetown controls the tap. Dwayne Bryant inside to Mutombo, who has been on fire the last month. Bryant off the mark. Walker for Xavier. Here come the Musketeers. Inside move by Hill off the mark. And a fresh 45 for the Musketeers. Man to man, both ends. Xavier in the dark blue, Georgetown in the gray. Hill blocked from behind by Mutombo, but Mutombo draws the foul. That's about the only time he'll get in some difficulty when he's behind. He usually has great patience blocking shots, but you can see the lack of mobility, his drop step baseline unsure. And a pretty good offensive performer and an unknown. Tyrone Hill, T to his friends. Nickname T time. Tyrone Hill, 6'10", 243, a senior out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Midwestern Collegiate Conference Player of the Year. And good rotation.
hesitation on that. Only a 63% free throw shooter, but he looked like a world beater with that one. Well, Pete Gillen said that Derek Strong and Tyrone Hill, they only come, on, come around once in 20 years at a place like Xavier. So he's enjoyed them a great deal and rode them as well. How appreciative is he? Mm -hmm. Hill connects on both of his free throws. The Musketeers out in front of the Hoyas by two. Uh, James, they'll go full throttle. They'll mix up the pressure. They like their man-to-man -man half court. The one team that may slow it down, believe it or not, is Georgetown. They are pretty good half court as well. Anthony Allen, the starting fourth spot for the Hoyas, loses control, regains it. And the Musketeers right up in Georgetown's chest. Mm, not backing off at all. Not a bad tactic, Bill. Take away some of that ball from the players. Get him right into it. That's why he pressed after the made free throw. Allen. Rebounded by Jamal Walker. Kicked out. And blocked. The shot by Maurice Brantley. No, they're not going to score the goal, I don't think. And they've got an offensive foul. Indeed, they do. Player on Maurice control. Brantley. That'll be his first personal. They have excellent kick-out passing ability. When I was watching tapes, I was thinking of Wes Unsel and his ability to turn and start a fast break. That ignited that play. John Thompson looking for more ball handling with this aggressive defense. And Xavier has David Edwards in the game for Anthony Allen, and it's stolen by Brantley. What? Block for the morning. The third block in the opening minute and a half by the Hoyas. To find Mutombo, who can't find the handle. Over penetrates on occasion, Walker. When he control, he's devastated. You thought, ten. you thought he would be the key player for Xavier. Yes. Jamal Walker. Jamal's got ability. Played a Carlo Hayes in New York. Has to be sound. Strong. Very strong. Short. Brantley. Follow. And it's a 4 0 Xavier lead. They got to walk on the inbound. Now you mentioned John Thompson going with the smaller lineup. The reason John philosophically loves aggressive defense, the three guard setup gives it to him. to the offense. Can be a 2-3 at times by Georgetown. Inside action to one of the Twin Towers. Derek Strong and the foul. It was whistled against Georgetown's Dwayne Bryant, his first person. You'll notice when the ball goes in deep, all the guards of Georgetown like to go down and scratch. And Pete Gillen, you see the glasses, he takes them on and off more than people in attendance in the library. <laughs> a nervous habit he has. He's very animated on the side of it. Oh, seemingly it's the system and becoming an extremely effective coach as we take a look at Derek Strong, the other half of the Twin Tower combination for Xavier. Strong, just the opposite of Tyrone Hill, an excellent free throw shooter at 83%, and he misses his first. This made it sets up the pressure. And they go right at it. And it's a five-zip Xavier Lee. Full throttle. Edwards. I'm wondering if the Hornets are a little surprised to see that full court press right up in their nose. I, I doubt it, because... This team is well thought of by people in the in the business. They understand it's full throttle all the time. And if they can get some outside shooting from Edwards, it would be awfully tough to guard the big people inside. Edwards first offering a three-point shot that finally puts the Hoyas on the board at the 17-25 mark, trailing 5-3. I asked Pete Gillen about his philosophy. I said, this is a whole new coaching philosophy, all-out basketball, player persuasion. Well, the players influence the coach to let him go. Walker. Rebounded by Morning. Edwards on the break. Good balance. Over to Tillman. Mark way off the mark. But Mutombo with the follow. The international language ascended in. Alert play on the missed tip. And Mutombo comes up with the rebound. And a tie ball game on the Mutombo slam. Well, the man a man. Do you notice Mark Tillman's missed jumper? I think he's pumped up. 
Ordinarily a good stroker from the Strong, banging, morning around on the inside. Morning loses the handle on the ball and a subsequent travel. Alonzo thought the ball was slapped and caused it, but when you miss them long, usually your eyes are shaking. You don't keep concentration, but uh, certainly right there and prepared in any language. His development over the past month and a half, Mutombo has been simply phenomenal. Mm -hmm. 15 double-doubles. And I mentioned the language because they say he speaks six or seven. And a nice old cut by Hill. Rebounded by Bryant. And John said, I speak two languages. He understands them English and profanity. <laughs> <laughs> and Morning goes up with the shot. Do they count the basket? And I believe it was Hill. If they put pressure, they don't have the backup people inside. Pete Gillen doesn't possess a deep inside game. You see the help strong on the high side hill with the chuck. They're going to have to control themselves. You may see some zone quickly. The foul was indeed on Tyrone Hill, his first personal foul, as Aaron Williams comes in for Xavier, replacing Derek Strong. Williams at 6'9". off the mark. Great it's a 7-5 Georgetown lead. 15-46 remaining in the first half. James Brown along with Bill Raftery coming to you from the Hoosier Dome. Second round action here in the Midwest. And Brantley playing because he's aggressive. Davenport hurt with the ankle. Plays like a football player. Doesn't know how to stop. And give David Edwards a credit for knocking that one loose. This is Bryant. And Williams who can rebound and block shots in the game now. Tillman open for three. Mutombo with the rebound, and he's fouled by Tyrone Hill. Ooh, James, you've got to put a body on him. He'll just clean up everything off the glass. Northern Iowa. Upset winner, of course, over Missouri. Looking good. That's got to be on the opening tip with LMU. <laughs> <laughs> a tap in off of the tip. <laughs> well, opening minutes actions here. Georgetown on top, 7-5. to five. Good crowd on hand here at the Hoosier Dome watching the Hoyas holding on to a two-point early lead over Xavier. Earlier today here in first... First game action, Texas. Squeaker by mm. Purdue. They move on to the round of 16. The winner of the Georgetown Xavier game will move on to Dallas as well. Michael Davenport into the game for Xavier. Number 20. And Derek Strong in the middle. Good help on the defense on down low. David Edwards misses his second three-point offering. And here come the Musketeers. Good this is shooter. Michael Davenport. Good shooter. Of course, Hurt normally would start. Tyrone Hill pumps, but walks before the pump. Now, Tyrone Hill said he would not try to make this game a statement game for him, but you can tell by his early aggressiveness, he wants this one badly. He's being forceful. He has to play within himself. When you play big guys, the only time you challenge me, get them on that angle. When they're straight up, don't be silly. Kick it out. Seven nothing run the last three minutes to take the lead by two. 14-35 remaining. First half action in the second game of the second round action from the Hoosier Dome. They got the five second out. Close guarding. Uh, Walker had played off Edwards, and Edwards now looking at John Thompson. Earlier in the year, John said he's going to kill me or I'm going to kill him. I it's think great. they understand each other now. <laughs> yeah, I, I know who's going to be the winner of that deal. But a great personality on the floor. Edwards, Andrew Jackson, high school of Bob Cousy. And of course, Frank Alasia, who played at St. John's. And his son played there as well. Not at Jackson, but at St. John's. David Edwards probably banged his name up on that wall as well there. He could score there. Hill, let this one go. All right. Hill charges into Dwayne Bryant, but the foul is called on Bryant. I thought it was going to be a play on the action there with the zone, the 1-3-1. Bryant occasionally gets caught under with the big guys. He's on the baseline. He has to run corner to corner, and this is the mismatch when you get it to the box. Ideally, there's a pass to the corner, and he can go around the big guy and have the center slide down. Second personal foul on Dwayne Bryant. As Tyrone Hill looking to add to his four points. 
And he does. Tyrone Hill, team's leading scorer at 20 a game. Puts Xavier in the lead by one, eight to seven. Bryant. Rebounded by Strong. The game will be played above the 10. Four guys that can really go after it. Xavier has two big bodies in the middle of Hill and Strong. And this is Strong on top face. He uses his body and scores. This is lack of concentration because in preparation, Strong favors the turnaround jumper. And generally, Mutombo stays planted. He doesn't anticipate, and the reason for it, he's not a victim of playing since he's a young kid in the schoolyards of America where every fake you want to have a message with a block. He has great patience generally. And Strong gets the roll. And Xavier out in front, 11 to 7. Strong has four points. And Georgetown turns it over, number seven. While Morning's in the backcourt because he can see over people, generally he makes the right decision. It's Thursday. A four-point Xavier lead in the early moments here. And Xavier doing the job on the boards. Not for the faint of heart. Derek goes up strong. And he's going to have to continue doing that, having major league stats to compete with Georgetown. Xavier up by two in the rebounding department. Walker. Strong. strong. He got away with one. Stripped by David Edwards. And Edwards won on four and somehow scored. He never recognizes numbers. He's been riding that subway in New York for a lot of years. <laughs> He's not, not afraid of rush hour. Glad. Pushing Xavier back out in front by four. His first basket. Well, that's what David Edwards does to John Thompson. He's, he almost holds his heart when he's off to the races like that. Sam Jefferson. And he scores. So Sam Jefferson, who came in to replace Dikembe Mutombo, drops in his first basket. I think Derek Strong gets this one, and he actually fouled, I think, Jamal Walker in to Sam Jefferson. Sam Jefferson, a 6'10", senior out of Washington, D.C. Originally went to St. Anthony's High School where John Thompson got his coaching start. Mm -hmm. And the last of the St. Anthony players to play for Coach Thompson. And Jefferson misses. And it's a two-point Xavier lead. 12-48 to go in the first half. Maurice Bradley and for the Musketeers. There's an almost caught between defenses there. We're switching and unsure. Tyler Hill has the kick. This is Gladden. The Xavier team on the offensive end, converting. Well, the newcomer of the year in his conference, very confident player. Dwayne Bryant loses the handle, called for traveling. A penetration gets everybody up, but they are very unselfish, this club. You see Gladden stepping in to the shooting area. And Pete Killen has to prepare. Forget about the awe. They're involved in the game. Making up for his mistake with the steal. Let's see if he finishes it. And he does. So Dwayne Bryant comes back, drops in his first basket of the afternoon, cutting the Musketeers' lead to two, 15 13. Riding with the dribble into the zone. Back and forth. A three point shot by Michael Davenport. And it's out to a five-point lead. And the reason he didn't start is that bad ankle. He's recovering slowly. Hurt the ankle in the Midwestern Collegiate Conference Tournament. Here's the 2-3. Morning. Rebounded by Strong. 
five it's rebounds for Derek Strong. And talking early, you got to go to two three to protect your big people. You don't want to get them in any foul problems early. Davenport, short. Bryant through traffic, rebounded by Morning, and he loses the handle and it goes back to Xavier. He really goes after a ball, though. He may have pushed a shove, but a winner, a heart underneath that shirt. Mutombo back in for Morning. Also number 41. And Antoine Stoudemire into the contest for the Hoyas. Tight ball game between Minnesota and Northern Iowa. And Michigan down by two to Bo Kimball and the Loyola Marymount squad. 1-3-1. One, one. Exchanging as in, as in a matchup. As the cutter goes through, the will stay. Walker kicks it out to Davenport. And Strong with yet another rebound, number six. Their confidence growing because they're getting their type of shots. Boy, Strong is throwing his 235 pounds around nicely in the middle. Georgetown eventually will play man-to-man. -man. They're going to have to come out and guard them. Too many easy shots. Nice pass into Strong. And Mutombo forced him to change the shot, but the Musketeers come up with the loose ball. And Tillman is going to get called for a reaching foul. So Mark Tillman picks up his first personal. would expect a squad like Xavier coming from the Midwestern Collegiate Conference the player said we know this will help to establish some respect for us if we can knock off Georgetown matter of fact they said scratch that win we beat Georgetown laboring in anonymity but people who play them know how tough they are watch their Dayton championship loss two terrific teams going all out both with similar philosophies Jamal Walker, Michael Davenport, Aaron Williams, Maurice Brantley, and Derek Strong on the floor for Xavier, and Strong powering his way in for the biggest lead of the game for Xavier, 20 to 13. Well, don't get Georgetown mad. A play, but, uh, you get them excited and involved in the game, going to their strength when they needed it. You see the usual help not there. Sam Jefferson opening up late. Alonzo Morning getting down a little bit late. And, of course, the physical play of a former football player. <laughs> to boot. Aaron Williams picked up the personal foul. Neither team in a penalty situation as Tillman drops in, too. Cutting the Xavier lead to five. 9.41 remaining in the first half. Georgetown trailing by five to Xavier. The Midwestern Collegiate Conference champion. Finished the regular season with a mark of 26 and 4. John Thompson in a 1 2 2, trapping out of it. The reason he switched the defense as a turnover is to make Xavier slow down. They like to go full throttle, make them be more patient. And Michael Davenport loses the ball off of the bad ankle, his right ankle that he twisted badly in the conference tournament the championship game. and probably feels he can exploit the quickness of them. Stoudemire way off the mark, but rebounded by the smallest man on the floor, Edwards. And Hill. He is pesky. Don't leave your wallet there, right? <laughs> he is an aggressive player, a lot of fun to watch. Brantley. For three. Seven points for Maurice Brantley, averaging only three on the season. Still the 2 three. Xavier on offense really getting a lot of easy goals because of their ability to draw and kick to open shooters. And one of the knocks on the Hoya squad all season long is a lack of a scoring forward as Jefferson misses. Numbers. Purdue fans are involved. 
with Xavier. And they're exciting play early. You love guys to finish off plays. And when you do it with authority, there is a message warning caught on the rear end. Aggressive. Sending it down. Oh. He's very lucky he's not injured. Having played ball as well as yourself, a lot of times you can tell when a player is or is not hurt. But I thought he was just trying to collect himself. Nice play. <laughs> How is it to come down from that height to the floor, by the way? <laughs> it's been a long time, partner, let me tell you. <laughs> Derek Strong, who usually shows up big against big competition, so Pete Gillum was not concerned about his play and understandably so and, and i believe he is hurt he's holding his left arm very close to his body 33 Derek strong xavier out in front by 10. Ooh, from Walker to him. well you know it's going well when you make a pass like that in traffic that should have been on the floor And right here, Derek Strong, this is his second major league rebound, showing his strength. And when we were away, he was hurting, sitting on a bench. He's in pain. He had been grimacing, and the trainer took a look at him and a favorable report, I'm told. Right, Dave? Yeah, that's only because he didn't want to smile. <laughs> Strong is fine. 6.40 remaining in the first half. Xavier on top, 28 to 15, out shooting Georgetown. 45% to 37 and out rebounding them 17 to 9. And Morning, with nowhere to operate, draws the foul though from Maurice Brantley, his third person. Hill had let Morning step into the three second lane, faulty defensively. But with Williams in now, he'll contribute in the absence of Strong with rebounding and maybe shot blocking. But I don't think he's going to the offensive job. The Hoya All-American, team's second leading score, gets the first. You know, night in and night out, he's the guy I'd want on my club. We call him the summer league, you always want to get a guy who played hard and rebounded. Morning would be the guy I'd like to take into any neighborhood. He just plays hard every day. Tough nose competitor. Mm -hmm. Michael Davenport takes a seat as Maurice Brantley comes in for Xavier. Or make that vice versa. And Anthony Allen in for Dikembe Mutombo for Georgetown. And John Thompson extending the floor as we look at Northern Iowa and Minnesota. That's a story, isn't it, LMU? Bo Kimball with four first half fouls. Stays in the game and scores 33 second half points in the victory the other night over New Mexico State. Awesome. And a man. Going after a little bit more now. Flat for two. Now, Tillman's been helping out. He can't. Tillman. Blocking foul. Call on Tyrone Hill. And Tillman falls on the back. But he gets up all right. Of course, last season, Tillman was plagued all season long with a bad back. Well, they got the outlet, snuck him long. And this is an excellent call. Hill really shouldn't have been involved in this. He's going to have to save those fouls for later. Didn't have the good angle. 
wouldn't believe it by the replay upstairs and the crowd reaction. Second personal call on Tyrone Hill as Aaron Williams takes a seat on the bench and Derek Strong returns to give the Musketeers their starting twin tower combination. Now, one of the dilemmas for John Thompson from my seat all year long is that he's such a good defensive coach that he's torn between playing big and having the perimeter people to be aggressive in their press. And at times it's been effective with the little guys, and then at times they don't have the scoring from the small forward spot. And that small forward spot has been a problem spot all season long. One for two for Tillman from the free throw line. Hoyas trailing by 12. Six minutes left in the first half. James Brown along with Bill Raftery. Midwest region location, Indianapolis, Indiana. They will not die easily, James. You saw the double up after half court, the little running jump. Bad pass by Davenport, recovered by Hill. Look at this. And Bryant. Lucky he didn't get a foul call. And Grant nails it from the corner for two. A 14-point Musketeers lead. Tillman misses the layup. And changed the call. And it goes back to Xavier's way. Much better play by Tyrone Hill. Stepped away, didn't get involved. Michael Tate, freshman forward, into the contest for the Hoyas, replacing Antoine Stoudemire. That shot of Pete Gillen, I can remember a friend of mine in New York, Ed Broderick, who's a Notre Dame guy. He just thinks he's a, an extraordinary coach. When he started out, he said, watch him. And Pete Gillen has taken this Xavier team to unbelievable heights. Georgetown. We'd like to welcome those of you who are watching the Loyola Marymount game in that contest with Michigan here in the Midwest region, Indianapolis, Indiana. James Brown along with Bill Raftery, where Georgetown is trailing Xavier by 14 points. And Xavier came out early on playing Georgetown's game and right now is beating Georgetown at its game. They were ready. They were not in all. They drove and kicked it off for good shots. Defensively, they've been aggressive. They start out man-to-man. -man. Now they're back in the zone to protect their big people and force Georgetown to shoot from deep. Right from deep, misses. Rebounded by Sam Jefferson. Can't find the range and a lid on the Georgetown basket. And Morning picks up yet another foul, his second. Georgetown is just so quick to a long rebound. All the little things are usually theirs. Well, there's some physical play. Strong and morning. They'll need some rest. Look at this. I mean, Alonzo pushed under three, four feet, but the four people, of course, Jefferson and now for Mutombo, have just gone after every errant shot. And John Thompson certainly being pushed to his tactical limits here in the first half against a good Xavier squad. Derek Strong at the free throw line, one half of that twin tower combination for Xavier, standing 6'10", 230. Drops in his eighth point to go along with seven rebounds. And Bill, for the audience, just joining us, elaborate on the fact that these two teams do share a lot of similarities, particularly in the middle. Well, the pressing philosophy is one, the pushing up the ball, but the big guys are very well thought of. A lot of scouts here to see Tyrone Hill, Derek Strong, not as familiar. Hill, a pretty good offensive player, shot blocker, and strong, very physical with a turnaround jump shot. Bryant finds the range for a two-point shot. Nice step in and a little Tennessee waltz by Hill and Morning. And it's a 14-point Xavier lead as the officials are talking to Tyrone Hill and Alonzo Morning. Thus far, Xavier out shooting Georgetown from the field and doing the job on the boards as well. Xavier with its own twin tower combination, two 6'10 players, and Tyrone Hill and Derek Strong winning the battle right now between Morning and Mutombo. And Xavier has forced Georgetown to play man to man earlier than I think John Thompson would have liked. They've taken him out of the zone, and this is when he penetrates. Jamal Walton rebounded by Derek Strong, who loses the handle. Tillman. Three on two. And 
Georgetown still can't find the hole. points for Tyrone Hill who averages 20 a game the MCC player of the year under control Jamal Walker is a great leader for this club and he I think saw the concern etched on John Thompson's face they've got a tough club in their hands Jefferson gets the roll 3 16 remaining the Hoyas of Georgetown the third seed here in the Midwest region trailing the number six seed Xavier Musketeers by 14 uh, the speed of the game is forcing the tumble out. Strong. That's his shot. They really like to gamble outside. They have the big people in the back to help out as well. It really improves your defense. And Morning is fouled by Derek Strong. Strong picks up his second personal foul. So Dikembe Mutombo has been on the bench for a good stretch mm -hmm. for Georgetown. And he is still hurting. That fall earlier, James, on the dunk. I don't think you're going to get him out for it, though. I doubt it. For long, anyhow. <laughs> now they, he, he he's, got a pro, guy. he's got a pro-type body. He sure does. For a couple of sports. <laughs> <laughs> Including rugby. Absolutely. Because with the made free throw, now we'll see if Georgetown goes after it. I just don't think they get as much out of their full court pressure as they did over the course of years for some reason. Not trapping as well. The third man in, not anticipating as well. Morning with his fifth point. I'm waiting for a ref to call that 10 second violation on the free throw. He may not work again. <laughs> he takes a lot of time on the line. Colin Parker goes in for Xavier. Michael Davenport out. And morning, unfazed by an errant buzzer at the scorer's table. Drops in the free throw. And Georgetown trails by 14. knowledgeable crowd here in Indianapolis witnessing the Georgetown Hoyas trailing the Xavier Musketeers by 14. Imagine in the NCAA tournament play around the country, St. John's played well but lost by to Duke. UCLA by one over Kansas. Jim Herrick got the Bruins back. Syracuse squeaks by Virginia and Terry Holland ends his season and hits for the AD job at Davidson. Earlier here in Indianapolis, it was Texas in a thrilling last-second victory over the number two seed, Purdue. That's two minutes important for Xavier. What kind of shots they get like that? And they ran a play, a screen down for Jamie Gladden, a freshman from Lorain, Ohio, and he's got ten points. I think Xavier's doing a great job getting back defensively, a fear that they had going in. And they've gone right at Georgetown with their offense. Perimeter game, no Mutombo, no Morning. to those of you who are watching the Northern Iowa-Minnesota contest here in the Midwest at the Hoosier Dome. It's Georgetown and Xavier, and the Hoyas being manhandled by Xavier Curry make it 42 to 24. James Brown along with Bill Raftery, and Bill, we said it all first half, Xavier with a twin tower combination all its own, manhandling Georgetown. And believe it or not, folks, that score is correct. Jamal Walker doing a great job penetrating and getting it to the big people. Michael Tate drops into for Georgetown. And it's a 16-point lead with under a minute remaining in the first half. They got the numbers right here. Uh, Parker, now his experience, backing it off. Perimeter shooter got hurt in the preseason, so 
not as confident as these other Xavier players. Aaron Williams. Oh, don't put it over your head like that. Protect the basketball. Only a freshman. Morning, Edwards and Tillman in to replace Stoudemire. Jefferson and Bryant for Georgetown. John Thompson desperately seeking the right combination. 31 substitutions for Georgetown in the first half. Well, John's uh, in the early days when we coach against Northern. He liked to sell the programs. Aaron Williams goes in for the slam that's partially blocked by Morning. They can hold it for the end. I, I want to... Uh, Pete Gill is putting up one finger. Let's see. The last 20 seconds of the first half, and Xavier with a comfortable 16-point lead. Obvious to stay at 16 or make it 18. Don't shoot too soon. Give George that down to five. From three-point land. the end of the first half with the score Georgetown trailing by 16 to Xavier CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA basketball championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station CBS sponsored by the new generation of Oldsmobile official car for the NCAA basketball championship the Goodyear tire and rubber company and by Allstate, for home, auto, life, and business insurance, you're in good hands with Allstate. Back here in Indianapolis, and no, that is not a mistake. Xavier, all over top of Georgetown, 42 to 26. And as we take a look at the stats, well, Bill, just a perfunctory measure here, because clearly Xavier ahead in virtually every category. Field goal percentage the job in rebounds both of these squads are one two in the nation georgetown xavier in that order in terms of rebounding margin only area georgetown has a plus is from the bench and the twin tower comparison bill we talked about that at the top uh, morning and mutambo certainly gonna have to lift up their game but there's something missing with this georgetown team we're so used to seeing them be the aggressor and going after it maybe john had a few choice words to get them perked up to say they were lifeless in the first half is an understatement Xavier throws the ball away on its opening possession of the second half, Georgetown ball. Now, obviously, some credit must be given to Xavier's defense, and Billy, I think that in the nose defense was strong. I think they've got to shoot good shots, obviously, but shoot them as quickly as possible, and the defense has to bail them out. Edwards, with great defense here, comes up with the steal. And boy, get the big guys involved a little bit. Back into the lineup after a long rest on the bench in the first half. Misses his jump hook. And Hill showing a great deal of strength. Knocking Morning on the floor. Walker. <laughs> and a Georgetown foul. I, I mentioned to you about Jamal Walker with the dribble. The first half, James, he just led this club properly that time. Unable to finish at the end but just valuing the ball in a beautiful fashion. The foul whistled against Dikembe Mutombo, his third personal foul. Sending Walker to the free throw line. Out of the Bronx, New York. And Billy, although Walker only had two points in the first half, it was his floor leadership that you were most impressed with. I guess it was heroes are. The Pearl from Washington and Rod Strickler. So my question to Gillen was, is he on time? Because Rod known for being... <laughs> he said, oh, no, no, no. He just loves the way they play. First with the Gauchos in, in New York, a, a basketball team that uh, travels the world. And a great recruit, Lou Del Meda, is the coach and coordinator. Doing a lot of good for kids. Shot. And he gets the bounce. That last foul was whistled against Jamal Walton. His first personal. And Georgetown trailing by 20. Uh, James, as you watch now, uh, Georgetown used to make the next logical pass the toughest and then rotate. They're not doing that. You see, leisurely making the pass to spots on the floor. And, and Xavier just having a comfort zone. There's a good help up there by morning. I remember 
the coach is saying before, being down this far. Hurry up with patience. And strong, and of course, the weak side help there as well. And speaking of help, when you've got the wingspan and you're aggressive in nature, you're going to come up with these plays. And they just need more of those continually. It's too sporadic for Georgetown. Foul called on Derek Strong, his third personal foul. So Derek Strong has three personal fouls. And Tyrone Hill has two personal fouls. Walker. Rebounded by Mutombo. And you notice the balance by Xavier. They've done a good job getting back, not giving up the easy one. Trailing by 14. Mutombo. As Georgetown methodically coming back has cut the lead to 12, 43-31. Well, Mutombo, who is out too far for that patented jump hook with a nice kick. Forcing the timeout here, Pete Gillen, not upset with his team, but he's got to get their composure back, get them into the flow once again. These points are usually synonymous with NCAA tournament play, Billy. Four team, four games decided by eight points, always close action. ACC feeling good about itself. And the Big Eight with four teams, all four knocked out. Even as the play, I don't think it's a reflection on the conference, but George, uh, St. John's was the only blowout of by four. <laughs> a little switch. John went to a 2-3 and then trapped out of it. And David Edwards is a, a real enthusiastic type of performer, and it's going to have to rub off on his club. Lethargic, unlike the typical Georgetown team. Wayne Bryant picking up his second personal foul. This is a... a give time to lace the shoe. John's going to try all his defenses now and see if he's reached them, see if there's an enthusiasm burning. Can he stoke the fire? He needs turnovers, quick shots to get it going his way, and then Xavier has to question the shot. Put a little stress on that. It hasn't existed thus far. The only time I saw Georgetown look as bad in the first half is against Northern Iowa. As Derek Strong goes in and powers his way in for a slam. With two. A gamble pass by Edwards to Jefferson. Just talking about a delay and warning, of the game. Yeah, being warned. Next time, that will be a technical foul. Well, that's supposed to be good for that. We're inbounding without the officials. <laughs> Just like... <laughs> Playground. <laughs> exactly. Now, that should go for both clubs now. Any delay of the game. Of course, the goal sets up the full court pressure. This is where they love to get it going. We will see the poise of Xavier. Are they in the right position? Good composure as they handle that. Brantley, Tyrone Hill, Jamie Gladden, Jamal Walker, and Maurice Brantley. Why don't they strong the five in for Xavier? You mentioned Tyrone Hill there is wide open. A lapse defensively. Strong. Looking just like that. Strong as Mark Tillman with the foul. His first. They change that. They called it on Sam Jefferson. He picks up his first personal. No respect to Sam. Anthony Allen comes in replacing Sam. points, 11 rebounds thus far for Derek Strong. Make it 15, and Billy, that's coming off of a Friday night performance of 17 points and 11 rebounds. He's a big game player. Can't give up these easy baskets, though. Bryant with the easy basket. A 12-point Xavier lead. Welcome to those of you who are watching the LMU Michigan game. Here at the Hoosier Dome, it's Georgetown trailing Xavier by 12, make it 14 on that basket by Tyrone Hill. And it was all Xavier in the first half, and thus far they're keeping the streak going. With the slam. Good night. 
because early on, it was the big people of Xavier. Hill and Strong doing the damage and the good control by Walker. And Georgetown now trying to get back in it. Not enthusiastic. And they've got a, do they have a technical? I think on Dwayne Bryant. Now, Dwayne Bryant was most upset with himself swinging his fist in the air and walked away from the official who made the foul call, his third. But the other official got on him. Especially the point. Now, oh, that doesn't seem that bad. It's not aggressive. I used to get technicals for showing up. <laughs> I mean, he's as quiet a youngster as you'll meet. All he did was express. I guess officials don't like to be shown. Derek Strong will shoot the technical. An 83% free throw shooter here with the second technical shot here. Over all the years, seldom do you see a George Knight did get a technical. John might get it. But the kids usually play. I didn't think that was a vociferous reaction. I feel a lot worse. Vosifer. Loud. Uh -huh. <laughs> the net effect is a 51-37. Xavier lead with 16-03 remaining, and Xavier has the ball. Well, that could ignite another run by Georgetown. Laddie and Walker have reacted beautifully to all the switching defenses. Gladden's the boss now with Walker getting a well-deserved rest. Unlike the John Thompson we saw in the Syracuse game, who got thrown out with multiple technicals, he's been awfully subdued on the sidelines. Don't you love your senior trying now? Blocking foul call on so, Michael Davenport. Good step in as Hill and everybody else jumped in, but Tillman able to go strong. For those of you just joining us, it's been an Xavier day all the way from the field and in rebounds and the Twin Towers. Derek Strong and Tyrone Hill have really done the job, 28 points, and have done the job with a combined 16 rebounds. And the question there with the summary was, was it a shooting foul? They said no. Tyrone Hill. Whistle for the foul coming over the back. His third personal foul. He's got to play within himself. Being strong, very key, particularly with the talent up front for Georgetown. Tyrone Hill had been the one getting most of the visibility, but Derek Strong certainly has made a strong case for NBA consideration. And the combo with the jump hook. I tell you, that was a tough shot off the glass. You just like Strong because he resembles you a little bit. Huh? Nice and big and tough. In my old days, and a clear out here on Dwayne Bryant. And he picks up his fourth personal foul. Well, the hand is out there, but the attention drawn by the theatrics. And Antoine Stoudemire comes in to replace Bryant. Georgetown trailing 51-37 to the Xavier Musketeers. Jamal Walker gets away with more action. He left himself up for grabs there as Allen overplays Hill. But he'll get you a little excited if you're coaching him, Jamal. He'll make some unbelievable moves and passes. And I, I asked Coach Gillen this morning, he said, well, you got to live with it. He does so much good. He leads us so well. No, that isn't David Letterman. That is Pete Gillen there. Head coach, fifth year at Xavier. He's done an absolutely marvelous job. MCC Coach of the Year this year for the third time in his five years there. Because he's had some pretty good teachers with Rolly Massimino and Digger Phelps. They're going to put a new 45 up, I think, because of the kick ball. Let's see. First, the ball was thrown in to the leg. I wouldn't call that a kick. Where's the whistle When did the whistle blow? And that is the conversation they're having. We got the to add some more time back to the game clock. Oh, I see. Okay. They said the uh, ball was actually uh, the whistle sounded at 15:08, and that's the time that's re-put, if you will, back on the clock. So the game clock reads 15:08. 41 seconds left on the shot clock. To finish the thought on Dylan, he got a lot of organization. He said from Bigger Phelps and the family atmosphere from Rolly Massimino. And indeed, his team, one of the more notable characteristics. The family atmosphere. 1-3-1 mm -hmm. right now. 
at some point, if they don't get the steals on the traps, they're going to have to come out and play and head up. Davenport for three. Hill with the rebound. Didn't need it. Morning. Up to ten. And Walker fouls him from behind. That's the one fear that Xavier had. The transition. Not getting back and protecting. Of course, the giveaway there saved the goal. Bill, you commented that Georgetown looked lifeless in the first half. They didn't have any heart, nor played with their heads. Certainly a distinct change in the second half. They're playing more aggressively, but it also shows how well Xavier's playing, that they still have a 14-point lead. Well, kids are, their reactions are unusual at times. Xavier, where's Xavier from? Uh, how good are they? How good's their count? And that's what kids, they start believing in the papers, and it takes a while to grab hold and straighten them out. Now, John, obviously, at halftime, got to them and their, their enthusiasm level is a lot better but this Xavier team has really withstood the onslaught well Georgetown slowly chipping away at that Xavier lead having cut it to 12 with 14.43 a lot of time and real small lineup by Georgetown now only morning 6-7 or over and John Thompson getting what he wants Bill in terms of changing the tempo with this smaller, quicker lineup. And now he's going for a little offense with Utombo in for Allen. So John taking advantage of the stoppage of play. So he hasn't Allen there. who's 6'7 and Mutombo who's 7'2. Well he hasn't been there all those years and won so often by sleeping. Point of that graphic, Xavier cold from the field. And the defense stepped up at each shot now. What you hope if you George Sam is to get them thinking a little bit. Morning. Xavier lead to 10, and Morning has 10, averaging 16. Penetration or the big guys underneath have to touch it. points for Tyrone Hill. Morning should not have put it on the no. floor. Made himself first size. Oh, nice pass to Hill. They, I don't know if they wiped the goal out. Hill may be hurt as well. Jamal Walker really doing a little extra just to get the house in it. Almost wipes out and Hill with the charge, they wipe the goal out, and in agony on the floor. Now, Bill, as pretty as that play was, should have been from a this. fundamental standpoint, Walker should have given it up a lot sooner because he actually blocked Hill's view of the defensive, defensive player. player. Good point. And the dish as well. Take a look. And that, this is where we mentioned Alonzo Morning had made. Now, he does a couple things with the ball he doesn't have to do. Now, this is where he had the dish to the left and did not do it. Just really... Blatton all alone never got a look. And not only did he get the foul, the wipe out of the goal, but a possibility of Hill with the injury and, of course, the insult of the foul. And let's give some credit as we gladly see Tyrone Hill walking away under his own power, although he picks up his fourth personal foul. David Edwards, the smallest man on the floor at 5'10", standing there and taking the brunt of that charge from Hill, who stands 6'10", 245. He didn't even think about it. He's got that moxie. John wait, wait, waving the ball back. Get everybody organized right now. Now, Bill, we heard them say they wiped the basket away. Yes. And they left it up. We're going to collect in a minute as Mutombo adds to the Georgetown score with the slam. 53-43. 15.05 remaining in the game. The winner, of course, moves to the round of 16 in Dallas. This is where experience in tough games comes into play. There's the advantage in that case to Georgetown. Strong on morning. Pushes him. The 19 points from Derek Strong, who averages 13. And they know where to go when they need a big basket. Strong or Hill. Edwards 
for three. Stoudemire with the rebound. Anything long, you know they're in the game when they come up with it. Now they got warning with an intentional foul as he grabs strong. John Thompson upset. This is two. They did have the basketball, so it's just the two. Intentional foul, and you'll get a chance. Alonzo Mourning does get involved with Tombo as well, though. Oof. Number 33 with a vicious shot. Unnecessary. Indeed. Makes it his third personal foul as Jamal Walker drops in the free throw. Really unnecessary. He's such a good player, too, but that, that's the frustration being vented. Not touching enough, knowing they're in trouble. And Thompson knows how that was an unnecessary foul on the part of Morning, despite his actions there. Walker drops in his fifth point. And it's a 12 point Xavier lead with 12 12 remaining. Play head on head on Walker. Stop. Rebounded by Mutombo. By Grant. Edwards with the step in. I started to mention now, David Edwards can play. Is he stuck with the foul? John not very happy with the change of events. The call's going against Georgetown, but Edwards has to play Walker head on head. He's helping out. When he gives it up, he doesn't have to stay at home. Georgetown over the foul limit. Xavier, the bonus situation. And you've already mentioned how Rod Strickland is a hero of Jamal Walker, and they are indeed good friends, and Walker as he's been taking a lot of notes from Rod Strickland's play as he drops in his sixth point to go along with six assists. You think this club will be fighting for identity if they happen to win this game in Cincinnati? I mean, maybe the Bengals and the Reds? They may not have the front page for a while. Musketeers showing why they deserve their highest seed ever and the 37,842 on hand loving it a second round tournament record here from the Hoosier Dome a first round record was set here Friday night when 39,940 showed up so you think fans here in oh, enjoy basketball they love it Mutombo with the rebound Nice job not putting it on the floor, kicking it out. Tillman, double punch. The big combo has a strip, but it's still Georgetown's ball. He does have a feel for the game, doesn't he? Getting better. Get, oh, what an improvement. And he said that he's working so much on that jump hook shot that John Thompson tells him no one will be able to stop if he perfects. And morning, way off the mark, and the smallest man on the floor with the rebound and scores. That's David an, Edwards. An energy rebound. He's in the middle of it. Nine points for David Edwards. Here's the contain. Foul whistled inside. Is this on morning? It may be again. Uh, uh, either morning or Mutombo. John Thompson called. No, they actually whistled this one on Xavier's number 52, Dwayne Wilson, a 6'8", 245-pound freshman. Look at that. Take a look at scores from around the NCAA tournament action. For those of you who may just be coming in, some great games. Texas, a squeaker by Purdue. Jim Delaney and his committee have to be delighted with the outcome of the game. They're so evenly matched. And UCLA over Kansas. Trevor Wilson and company. 
Don McLean, here we have Alonzo Mourning trying to cut into a 12-point Xavier lead, and now it's 11. Uh, generally, they don't do this stuff. They don't permit that. Stop the play. They did before the ball was inbounded. Exactly. Oh, the ball had been yeah. handed to him. That's a nice courtesy. And the gentleman did. Because <laughs> 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 he probably feels his kids need the rest anyhow. Pete Gillen said that he's been trying to set up a game series with Georgetown for a long time. What time does he call on? 4 in the 4.30 morning. in the morning. Let's hit ring once. And Hank said, he said, after today, I don't want to have any more phone conversations. One for two for morning. Rebounded by Mutombo, who goes up and strong. Looked like he had all ball. Could have been a jump ball. But you have to admire Mutombo for getting in there. Couldn't wrestle it free. But it always keeps the arms extended. That's an extraordinary rebound. And a lot of bumping and banging underneath, but you may be right. Could have easily been called the jump. Dikembe, talk about a quick learner, Bill. Each game he's progressed and shown that he's learned a new fundamental from the coach. I remember early in the year doing the Paul game, and John Thompson said he's learning how to make the little hooks, the little crossover steps, power moves. He just hasn't been able, there's always traffic around him, if you notice, to utilize it during the game, and who better to teach it after playing behind Bill Russell and doing so well at Providence than John Thompson. Right now, Thompson would settle for that. Made free throws. It's a 10-point ball game. And look who the, the man in the middle, the free safety. Usually it's that forward about 6'5 or 6. It's Edwards. Great anticipation. Set up in a 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. Jamie Gladman replacing Michael Davenport for Xavier. 11 minutes remaining. This contest between the number three seed, Georgetown, and the sixth seed, Xavier. Ooh. Big strong pick. Strong with the nice pass inside. And Georgetown scrapping. Possession arrow favors there Georgetown. David Georgetown. the difference there the pass wasn't to him you've got to know who's on the floor Wilson not as good at catching and seeing that strong made a normally good look but unfortunately not the same kind of receiver Alonzo Morning in for Anthony Allen the five for Georgetown Alonzo Morning David Edwards Antoine Stoudemire Dikembe Mutombo and Mark Tillman In the zone. Flat one, two, two. Both teams over the limit and fouls. All shots from here, bonus. James Walker way back, not really challenging David Edwards. And Mutombo trying to draw attention to the fact that Strong is pushing him from behind. Good post up. And Xavier steals it. you get to the top of the key, if they're going to flatten out, who better to shoot that jumper at the top? Walker spins Xavier into a 12-point lead that Edwards cuts to nine with that three-point shot. Got to take it, though. They're not really respecting the outside shooting of Georgetown. David Edwards, as a freshman, providing some strong leadership at the point with 12 points for Georgetown. The flexibility of Georgetown. Mutombo out guarding at the point of the zone. Derek Strong, good puck fake. But he went before. I have not seen Mutombo take as many fakes in the season as he has from Derek Strong here. I think he's really energized. He's not focused as well. But now the other end, this spin move. No need to say the Pearl could spin in a phone boat, put Jamal Walker in there with him. Extraordinary ability in the open floor, and it's got Xavier ahead. 61 52. Yo, boy. 
Lawrence Black in the house with action photos, my main man, Money. This is Money slamming in Detroit, in Philly, Boston. Must be a bird's eye view. These 52, Xavier on top with 919 remaining in the contest. James Brown along with Bill Raftery coming to you from the Hoosier Dome. Got time for those three pretty good perimeter shooters in Stoudemire, Tillman, and Edwards. And of course, the big guys can rotate high and low. Against this zone. Mutombo. What a pass by Edwards. Of course, not a bad target. Down to a seven-point lead by the Musketeers with 8.53 remaining. This is where things get into the head. Almost stepped on the backcourt, Jamal Walker. Nice. Pump fake. Misses. Hill loses the handle on the rebound. And David Edwards, the little man who's been playing big. He's been confident from the first day on the floor for Georgetown. Thompson said he would get to this point, but he thought it might be next year as morning taking a shot. He can make that, though. That's a good shot for Georgetown. Tillman thought he had knocked it off a Xavier player as Thompson. Trying to run through the options he has. On the organization there, they're going offense, defense quickly. Mike Riley making sure Allen got in, didn't waste any time. They've been able to beat Georgetown's press with the dribble. Walker. Without coming down. Back to a nine-point lead. Uh, Jamal Walker is going to turn it over, James, against the Georgetown press. And this is a tough pass by Edwards. Tillman doesn't look good on it, but it's really David Edwards' fault. And Thompson. Trying to keep it under 10. Calls timeout. You tell your point guard, use good judgment. Don't dribble through people. Protect the basketball at key times in the game. Jamal Walker will have none of that. And just look at this follow, James. I mean, most guys can come down, bring it back out. Not him. Always with the full throttle. But he better be careful. The heart of a champion Georgetown possesses. And you can't dribble through everybody. Walker goes through two people and to his 13th point by Jamal Walker, six assists and three rebounds. And Edwards answers right back with the three. Counters, well, right now, if I were asked, I would go to Vegas with Jamal Walker. He is on a roll. Edwards not doing badly with 15 points as Xavier throws it away and it goes back to Georgetown. This is not supposed to happen against the big people. And the one time after this goal that he makes a pass instead of dribbling, it goes out of bounds, James. Maybe he should beat his own trap with the dribble. Mark Tillman replacing Antoine Stoudemire. David Edwards, big game, three for three from three-point land, 15 points, averaging five points. Tough mentally and very confident. Morning. Wasn't ready for the pass. Oh, no. And showed it by walking. No. Thompson disagrees. What happened was he caught it and got bumped, and the lead foot moved twice. And just a tough play. He didn't expect the pass in fairness to Alonzo Morning either. John Thompson going with the defensive. Quickness with Anthony Allen in, replacing Mutombo. Oh. Edwards almost caused a turnover. Here comes Walker. One on two again. Would somebody talk to Jamal Walker? You've got to respect those big guys. Walker, nice pass to Straw. Off Xavier, Georgetown's ball. And Mutombo back in for Georgetown, replacing Allen. Pete Gillis said 
We're going to fight that fire with fire. Maybe we have a cigarette lighter and they have a blast furnace. They have not backed off at all. Now the question of judgment comes into play for Xavier. Fouled out front by Tyrone Hill. That's it. And that may be all for Tyrone Hill. What a nickel dime foul for him to commit. Very careless foul by Tyrone Hill. The conference player of the year. You don't like to make it automatic, James, out on the floor. He's just beaten. He could have trailed and swiped with his size. Unnecessary. Tyrone Hill leaves the game with 13 points and 7 rebounds. Seven points under his season average. And five under his rebound average. And the four general for the Hoyas, David Edwards, asks for a little bit of the perspiration to be wiped off. He tells all the Georgetown players what to do. He might as well tell the team of officials what to do. He's the same guy that grabbed the ear of Mutombo and Morning and pulled them down to his side. He had to jump and get it, though. <laughs> but he did it. Uh, shout out Tyrone Hill, Withrow High School, with Rick Callaway, and Sal Thompson, and Lewis Warren, who's here, went. And possession arrow favors Xavier on the tie-up. I know B. Gillen needs Williams to step up and play well and strong to be even bigger and tougher than ever. Gladden, Williams, Walker, Strong, and Brantley, the five. For Xavier. This is the one, two, two. You trap on the wings if you can. They go over the top to defuse the press. And Edwards temporarily steals it back to Xavier. He is amazing, isn't he? Never gives up on the traps. 5.56 remaining in the contest. Xavier on top. 65-57. Now Xavier not known for great half-court offense. It's always wide open. Have to be conscious of what a good shot is. Gladden. Mm. Rebounded by Allen. This is Tillman. They got the cross court if they look. He's Bryant. Mutombo fouled by Aaron Williams. Nice look by Bryant. Only a senior would make that kind of pass in such a tough situation. Experience showing, and of course the giveaway by Williams. This will be tough to contest. Standing, it would be difficult. Jumping, impossible. Lane violation, look at another one. And the coach's eyes caught it. It's not like you're keeping morning away. Look how early Aaron Williams is in. does not capitalize on the opportunity. Georgetown still trailing by eight with 526 remaining. Oh, you gotta pick the ball up tomorrow. Well, Hillman gets it instead. And slams it home. This team is too good, Georgetown, to not respect the ability and recovery in the press. They do not give up on it, James. It's continual. It gnaws and it has its impact eventually. Georgetown is cutting to the lead, 65-59, and Georgetown was so lethargic in the first half. What clue did you even have then that they might be able to come back? The big fell on the bench. He's going to plead to their pride. You think he let them come out here with their success? They're going to press and go after you. They're going to take advantage. They read things. They see things. You can spin dribble and beat them occasionally, but you can't keep doing it because they understand the game, react to the game, and finish plays. 5-14 remaining, down to a six-point Musketeer lead. Gladden, for two. Back to eight. Is that confidence? For those of you who are watching the Northern Iowa-Minnesota game, welcome to the Midwest region's second round action here. Georgetown and Xavier. Georgetown has cut the lead with that slam by Mutombo to 
Xavier had a 16-point halftime lead, and Georgetown has come out with their press and their big men and have gotten back into it. Give a lot of credit to David Edwards as the floor leader. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a knockout. They get a trail foul either on Allen or Tillman. They like to trap on the sideline, get some action either to the inbound man or in the middle of the floor. But Xavier has a couple of people who think they can win it all on their own in Walker and Gladden. And they've got to use strong, I think, if they're going to have any control of the outcome. Strong certainly played big in the first half. Bill Raftery, Anthony Allen assessed the personal foul, his second. And Jamie Gladden nails the first free throw. Uh, Jeff Fulgerson, the athletic director at Xavier, was an assistant athletic director down in Washington for Frank Rienzi, and of course worked with John Thompson. So, some family ties in this ball game. Maybe a little too close for John Thompson. A seven-point Xavier lead with 4:19 remaining. And Tilt can't convert in traffic. Mutombo taking over, and that shot down, threw down the hook, <laughs> took the words out of my mouth. A five. Point Xavier lead. They've got to keep him out of the three-second lane. He's been touching it three times and has been effective. Rebound, Mutombo. Composure and control right now, Xavier letting it slip away. And Morty emphatically with a message. That's going to be a yeah, double award. Good call. Georgetown trailing now only by three with 335 remaining. And here's the poise and patience of an experienced team. Mm -hmm. Jamal Walker has to calm down, take over, and get into their half-court sets. Loyola Marymount and Michigan here to the Midwest region second round game Georgetown Xavier battling for the right to move on to the round of 16 in Dallas 154 remaining all tied at 70 apiece straight up man to man this is Xavier watch the double on the dribble particularly with Walker Walker off the mark but rebounded by Aaron of fire in one of the most important games in Xavier's history. And Walker tags the ever-active David Edwards. Georgetown decreased the number of turnovers, increased their field goal shooting percentage. Tyrone Hill fouled out 
for Xavier, a big loss. Their leading scorer at 20 a game. So Xavier operating without any timeouts and their leading scorer. And that's because of the aggressive play of the dribblers of Georgetown. They took it to Hill. David Edwards misses the free throw. He's got 18 on the game. Has yet to convert from the free throw line at 0 for 2. Cuts the Musketeers lead to 1 with 128 remaining. Amy Gladden, Jamal Walker, Derek Strong, Aaron Williams, and Michael Davenport, the 5 in for Xavier. When you're not a, uh, if you're the type of team that likes to rev it up, and you're not used to holding it, you've got to be concerned about what type of shot you end up with at the end of the shot sequence. Xavier not used to this. Oh. Playing the block by Mutombo. Morning trying to tap it ahead to Bryant. And Edwards. Oh, it's just it great. Back to Xavier. Great all-out effort. Seven-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Xavier holding on to a one-point lead over the third-seeded Hoyas of Georgetown. Walker very calm. And Walker pushed from behind by David Edwards. He was taking a look at the time, but a big effort defensively by Georgetown. They just didn't come up clean after the shot block. 23 seconds remaining. Xavier with no timeouts. Leading by one. They may get one. I think John may be looking to call one just before the ball is handed. Now he's waving it off. <laughs> Time out of the action. 23 seconds remaining. No Hoyas. Down by one. Yo, Barnes Blackman in the house of action follows my main man, Money. This is Money slamming in Detroit, in Philly, Boston. Must be a bird's eye view. In games decided by five points or less this season, Xavier has been very calm and collect four and one. It's on the time free throw line, Jamal Walker. On the miss, Xavier will try and tip it back, and of course, Georgetown will try and react and grab it. Uh, James, if he happens to make this now, I still think John Thompson can go inside to the big guy, get the deuce, and call his timeout and get his press organized. Not take the three. Not take the three. He doesn't have to. Plenty of time. This would make it a three-point lead. Freshman only a 38% free throw shooter. Trying to add to a three-point lead. Rebounded by Mutombo with 10 seconds remaining. Stolen, but foul. Now here's the Walker danger. On Edwards. A lot of people, and you'll hear this controversy, should we foul them and put them on the line so they can't tie? Give them a chance for two. The dilemma, the size of Georgetown. There is nobody quicker in the country on a missed free throw to the ball than Alonzo Mourning. He's got Williams, an inexperienced freshman, trying to check him with a smaller Gladden. So if he makes one... 
Maurice Brantley in for size, rebounding purposes, replacing the smaller Gladden, who's only six feet. And David Edwards at the free throw line, a 71% free throw shooter. Next, Horning with the tip out. Shot misses. And Morning fouls. And that should be all for Alonzo Morning. Six freshman at the free throw line, only a 61% free throw shooter with six seconds remaining and a three point Xavier lead. Nobody down to pressure if he happens to miss. They've got a chance to get another three. Up to Edwards. Foul with two seconds remaining. Now here's the situation, James. Make the first. Miss. Obviously, miss the second with a soft touch. Unfortunately, Morning not in the game, but you got Mutombo and John pondering on the sideline. Exactly. Now he's going to tell or direct Mark Tillman as for what the Edwards exactly what Edwards exactly should do. Then it's obvious that Edwards ought to miss attempt to miss to the side of Mutombo. Uh, Allen they're going for to be on the other side. So he probably take Stoudemire out. And that's exactly what happens. But still, you would miss to the side of the Tombo. Or, or uh, in, in the front, if you could. You know what I mean? You usually pick the side. It's over. Xavier knocks off the three seed, Georgetown. Elated Pete Gillen, Coach of the Year in the Midwestern Collegiate Conference, and his Musketeers have knocked off the mighty Hoyas. Now let's join Bill Rafter in the middle of, of a jubilant Howard right, Pete, Pete Gillen. We get it. Pete, congratulations. You look like Rowley with the shirt out. Just as big a win as he had. I wrinkle easily. That's all. I can wrinkle easily. Kids got a lot of courage. We bet. We bet, but we didn't break, and they deserve it. You ought to talk to them. Buddy. You mentioned to me a win for the little guy. One for the little guy. Hey, Georgetown's got a great team. John Tom's a great coach. Our kids just played great today. We're, we're very fortunate to win. Derek Ball. Hey, Jamal. You are unbelievable with the basketball. You've got to drive. Be killing nuts. <laughs> <laughs> me and Coach Gillen, sometimes, you know, he goes and follows. But I think he lets me do what I have to do to win the games. You know, I'm glad he does that. Let me free some time. I just want to say hi to New York, everybody. <laughs> to the man upstairs, not now, Xavier, 74-71 over Georgetown, so Xavier joins Texas in the round of 16 in Dallas, the Chevrolet players of the game, Jamal Walker from Xavier, and David Edwards from Georgetown, for Bill Raftery, I'm James Brown saying so long from the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis, Indiana, let's go back to our New York studio and Jim Nance. 
right, James, thank you. And so only two teams from the Big East out of the six that made the tournament field as Pete Gillen jumps up and down will advance on to the Sweet 16. Syracuse and UConn as Georgetown is ousted. Mike, the Midwest, I thought it was the toughest region going in. What's happened here? Well, one, two, and three seeds out. We talked about it at the top of the day. Caution for the top teams. Eight of the top 16 seeds will be out once Michigan, which is being pounded, loses today. You know, it's a tournament that's got a little bit of everything because Ball State, David Letterman's alma mater, is in the Sweet 16, and now his look 